Hello, welcome to the Baltic World. My name is Crispin. Charlene and I have just returned from a five week long trip to Europe, our first time out of Australia since COVID. Four of those weeks were in the Baltic countries, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Incredible experience, extraordinary people, and a lot of lessons to impart for everybody who is planning a trip to this incredibly exotic and underappreciated region. Now, for those that follow the channel closely, of course, we haven't uploaded much in the last few weeks. Don't worry, we have so much great content in the pipeline. The primary excuse for the trip was to get a lot of B-roll, photos, drone footage, for upcoming videos to talk about this region. However, this video is recorded just as I've landed back in Australia and is my top 10 tips for a successful adventure in the Baltic region if you're traveling to Lithuania, Latvia, or Estonia. So in no particular order, let's get into it. Number one, learn a few local words. Yes, young people can speak very good English. You'll have no trouble getting around just talking normally. But remember, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania each has their own unique native language that they have preserved despite extraordinary pressures from foreign occupiers and invasions over an extended period of time. If you say simple things like labas, archu, that will help you immensely with the local population because that shows an interest and appreciation for the local culture. Number two is learn some of the local history. I don't mean detailed academic knowledge, just the broad strokes, the Soviet occupation, the German influences, the Hanseatic League, the Polish Lithuania Commonwealth, and the Northern Crusades. If you can piece that together in general terms, you will have a much greater appreciation for everything that you see around you and have far more interesting interactions with the locals who are cognizant of all of these issues. Uh, it is gonna help you tremendously appreciate and get the most out of the trip to the Baltic region. Number three, ask serious questions. People wrongly perceive the Baltics as unfriendly, standoffish, and reserved. That's not true. What they are is sincere. They don't abide small talk. So if you ask a question like, hi, how are you? Unless you really mean it, it's not gonna be a, a grease for conversation. But if you ask something specific about the location, the history, something that they're interested in, and you express an interest yourself, you will be told stories and have interactions that you will absolutely not forget. They are incredible people. Just ask serious questions and you'll get proper answers. Number four, seemingly trivial, but get a SIM card as soon as you can. I had always been a bit of a boomer on this. I'm like, Wi-Fi will be fine. I just check email and Facebook and catch up with people. I'm here to enjoy my trip. I don't need to be on my device all the time. However, Charlene insisted and it was the best decision ever. First, incredibly easy to register. Just put the SIM card in. Seconds later, I was online. No effort at all. It was very helpful. But secondly, the way we use internet on our trip is transformed. Uh, the apps for accessing transportation, whether it's public transportation or the local ride shares, very important, very useful. Spend the few seconds necessary to pick one up. Definitely do it. Don't forget. Number five, get out of the capital cities. Now, I'm of two minds about this because Tallinn, Riga, and Vilnius are among the most beautiful cities in the whole world. Everything you want in a European trip and none of the drawbacks. Beautiful old towns, fantastic people, cuisine, easy to get around, no overwhelming tourist crowds, no tourist traps, people aren't trying to rip you off, just exotic beauty wherever you go. However, the Baltic countries have so much remarkable natural wonders that it is a real shame not to experience them. So the other cities in the Baltic states go around those. For example, in Latvia, there's Sigulda, there's Jagava. Uh, in Lithuania, there, there are other cities, Kaunas, Shaole, many regional areas, the Traki, Nagava. All this beauty, which we will have videos on in due course. We've got great footage, as I say. But get out of the capital cities, even if it's just for day trips, it will exponentially enrich your experiences, I promise. Number six, try the local cuisine. Now, Baltic food has a reputation for being quite heavy. That's because they eat a lot of potato and a lot of cream. So that makes sense. 
However, the ingredients they used are remarkably fresh. They also put a lot of emphasis on bringing out the natural flavors of foods. Now this contrasts dramatically with my own country, Australia, where there is a lot of emphasis on adding spices. It's very chili based, you have a lot of paprika and pepper and all this other food, basically dousing whatever you eat to make it taste like a curry. Whereas in Northern Europe, in the Baltics in particular, the food very much emphasizes the natural flavor. What can you do to enhance the taste of that spinach? What can you do to enhance the taste of that sausage? And I found that to be a well worthwhile experience. I did not find myself missing the food at home at all. Number seven is another one that I have Charlene to thank for, because if you're like me, you don't like asking for help, so it doesn't really occur to you to do this, but go to the tourist information bureaus. The ones in the Baltic states, for whatever reason, are incredibly well set up. The people who work there are very excited to tell you about the local area, how to get the most out of your time there, however long you have, and you'll get a lot of the local knowledge and stories. So for example, I didn't know that Shaolei was named after the sun or the Battle of Seoul. We'll make a whole video about this because of the information provided to us by the tourist information. They give you a lot of information for free. It really greased the wheels of our trip. We knew exactly what we wanted to do after that. The people there were very nice and just go to the tourist information. Don't be someone like me who's like, oh, we'll just wing it along the way. They really do point you in the right direction and give you so much more than you could have expected going in. Number eight, check the weather and pack appropriately. I live in Australia, I look out the window, if it's sunny, I know what to wear, if it's overcast, I know what to do as well. Whereas that's not the case in the Baltic. Sometimes it's sunny, but very cold, or it's overcast and surprisingly warm, make sure you've packed the full spectrum of clothing when you go to the Baltic region. Even if you go in the summer, uh, make sure that you also have some warm clothes as well, just for those off days. Because although weather is quite consistent within any given day, it has dramatic changes often during a single week. So make sure that you are prepared and able to dress appropriately and have the best experience possible. Number nine, prepare to have your assumptions challenged. The Baltic countries are nothing like, nothing like we imagine Eastern Europe to be. It has super fast internet, a thriving tech sector, dynamic economy. This is a happening place with a lot of switched on young people. The countries have been totally transformed over the past 10 years, and they resemble far more how most people imagine Sweden to be than anything like a dilapidated Eastern European bloc. And there's a lot of positive things that come with that. So not only do things run smoothly and efficiently, but take Charlene, Asian girl, obviously foreign, perfectly safe the entire trip. We felt totally secure. Everyone was friendly and just trying to sincerely help. We never felt exploited. Now, of course, bad things can happen wherever you are, but I felt at least as safe in the Baltic states as I do here in Australia. It was a wonderful experience the entire time. Finally, and this one is so important, if you're lucky enough to make new friends in the Baltic and they want to show you some places or give you a new experience, just say yes. The entire region is filled with hidden gems, things that you will not find on your own, but will absolutely not forget. One day they'll all be discovered, it'll be commercialized and touristed, but for right now it is absolutely special and iconic. So do make friends locally, find out what to do, and you'll have experiences that you just can't even imagine right now. So the Baltic, definitely go to the Baltic. It is one of the most underrated, picturesque, extraordinary experiences of my entire life. Now, whether you're a foreign tourist or you live locally in the region, if you have your own tips, leave them in the comments below. I'm sure many people would like to see them. Now, if you want to support our work, you can do so on Contrabe. Contrabe is a Patreon alternative that is a Lithuanian startup filled with fantastic and dynamic people. We were lucky enough to meet Gediminas and Mantis of the team while we were over there in Kalnas recently. They are lovely people and I'm really excited about their ideas. Uh, Charlene and I upload additional content, usually me making a fool of myself, uh, on Contrabe, so check us out there. 
Otherwise, just like and subscribe, share these videos if you're interested, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.